Hello and welcome to Bilingual Analytics. My name is Roland and I'm super glad to see you here. In today's episode, I'm going to share with you my top five tips to get you started with Power BI in 2022. Whether you are a business analyst, a financial analyst, or a commercial analyst who lives and breathes in Excel, or someone from the sales and marketing, or from the operations team, you will find great little nuggets in this video to fast track your learning with Power BI. While the target audience of this tutorial is mainly those who are on the business side of a company, I reckon even IT or technical people can get a lot out of these ideas. I also added quite a few materials to the description box below, videos, blog posts, tutorials and books that I referenced throughout this video. Before we start with the first tip, I would greatly appreciate it if you could hit the like and subscribe buttons below this video. It helps others to find this content and learn more about Power BI. Thanks heaps! Did someone tell you that Power BI is the new Excel? Sorry to say this, but they were wrong. Power BI is primarily a data visualization tool that can empower team members to discover insights hidden in your data. Yes, that's actually Microsoft's definition of Power BI. But why would I say that Power BI is not the new Excel? While there might be some crossovers between these two tools, they serve a different purpose. Power BI helps you to visualize your data. It can guide those colleagues who are not number savvy to understand the true meaning of the business results within a blink of an eye. While Excel is there to create more robust analysis and in a sense to interact with those numbers on a cell-by-cell -cell basis. And don't get me wrong, almost every week a new extension, custom visual or something similar pops up that tries to replicate Excel-like features in Power BI. But in my personal opinion, these two tools will always complement each other, not replace one or the other. If you have a strong Excel background, and I'm going to assume you do come from an Excel background, data modeling is probably a new concept for you. In case you started your Power BI journey without any, in a classical sense, training, you probably just imported a large, flat Excel file to Power BI. When I say flat file, I mean something like this. A single, large table with lots of columns, columns that may come from your original data source or may be there because you added them with some sort of a lookup formula. While these flat files will work, they won't perform as quickly as a proper data model designed for Power BI reports, especially if you have lots of data and lots of columns. This means that you must learn about the so-called star schema. It is a data modeling approach used in relational data warehouses. It has fact tables and dimension tables. What it means is that you have to split those large flat files into smaller, or I should rather say, thinner tables. Then you can create relationships between those thinner tables and slice and dice the data to your likings. There is no need to look up details from one table to another and create extremely wide tables, especially when it comes to transactional reports. If you want, you can watch my take on why the star schema is crucial and learn more details about it. I added the video to the description box below and you can also find it at the top right corner. Be sure to start your learning with the data modeling concepts. If you do a lot of data massaging or transformation to get certain reports into the desired shape, then you must start using Power Query. It is a fantastic tool to shape your data, create and automate reports. I like to say that at least 95% of the things that a business user would create in Excel's VBA can be done in Power Query. And the best part is that it comes with a graphical user interface. It means that we can just click on very descriptive buttons instead of writing any code. Isn't that great? Do you want to unpivot data that you received from someone else in your team? You can do that with a click of a button. The same goes for pivoting. You can also use Power Query to combine files. Let's say that you want to create a report that picks up all the daily sales reports from a folder. Power Query is there to help you. You can find some of my videos about these great features down below or by clicking on the info card at the top right corner. And do you know what I like the most? The fact that I only need to teach Power Query once how to transform my data into a shape that I need. After it is done and I'm happy with the end result, I can even create a custom function that will iterate through all of the imported files and queries. This could save you lots of time. Time that you will be able to spend on analyzing the data rather than fixing it. Oh, and lastly, one more important bit about Power Query. 
If you don't need data visualization, you can also access Power Query within Excel. You don't have to push the data to Power BI and then back to Excel if you know that your report should be in Excel. The Power Query magic is also available in Excel. The first couple of DAX measures I wrote in Power BI would have quickly revealed that my background is Excel. While some functions or formula may look or even work the same, it takes time and lots of practice to master DAX. And I'm not talking about the SQL BI kind of mastering it, just getting to know the most important functions. Things like time intelligence function or my longtime favorite, the switch function. It looks easy, but if you want to take your DAX skills to the next level, you have to properly study it and invest some time in reading about it. The best resource for that is the definitive guide to DAX book. From time to time, I still need to open it and reread some bits. By now I know heaps more about row context and filter context. If you just started your journey with Power BI, these could slow down your learning curve. Not because these are difficult concepts to understand, but more like that these are topics that you never had to keep in mind when it comes to Excel usage. And while we are on the subject of complex DAX, when you start to solve problems in Power BI with an Excel mindset, I can guarantee that your DAX will be difficult to write, read, or even troubleshoot. Here is a suggestion that always works for me. When you come across a problem that requires some complex DAX, think about your data model. You see, I started with the data modeling tip because it is important to get a blazing fast report. A great data model can also have a huge impact on your DAX measures. Not only when it comes to the execution time or how quickly a measure loads, but also from a readability point of view. Your DAX lines will be easier to read, easier to adjust, or troubleshoot. One more thing about DAX and a bit of comparison to the Excel formula language. If you are not sure how to solve a problem in Excel, you Google it, you find the formula and copy paste to your worksheet. And that's it, not a biggie. While if you try to just copy paste the DAX code from the DAX patterns book without having a good understanding of DAX concepts, chances are it won't work and you won't be able to troubleshoot it. So as I said, if you want to take your DAX skills to the next level, invest some time in reading some books or online guides. Data visualization is fun. I'm not going to lie, it is a lot of fun. But please, always remember that we create reports to answer business questions. When I started to spend more time learning and practicing data viz, I remember spending countless hours finding the right background image for a report. It is far less important than having the right data surfaced in the report or making sure that the question you got from your colleagues is actually answered by the report. Believe me, even if you stick to the default Corel theme in Power BI with a white background for the first couple of reports, your team, your report users are going to love what you create. In the real world, we all have deadlines to keep in mind and to deliver reports by that time. It means that if you spend too much time on report design, you may end up losing precious time that could and should have been spent on data exploration or testing. Think about data viz as a luxury, not as a necessity. Your data modeling skills will improve, your power query and DAX knowledge will be better, and all of that means you will have more time to spare on better and more complex data viz. And just like with Excel reports, you have the time to go through a few versions before settling for the final report format that works fine and suits your audience the best. I know that watching other people on YouTube or reading blog posts can be overwhelming. Been there, done that. Actually, I'm still there sometimes. But when you start your journey, I would suggest starting small. Don't worry about extensions, custom visuals, XML endpoint, and all the bits and bobs that are not part of the default Power BI desktop install. These awesome tools are there to explore, but at first, you have to know why they are needed or what's the point of using them. If you practice and upscale yourself, I can guarantee that in no time you will be able to start exploring third-party add-ins for Power BI. And I know that the FOMO is real, but nobody expects you to be an expert in the tool overnight or to be an expert on all features. It would be impossible. So probably don't even try. I try to list my top five tips in a logical way, in building block style. Once you understand the first one, you can get started with the second tip and so on. 
Of course, these are just high-level concepts and ideas on how to start your Power BI journey, especially if you are more of a business user. Luckily, there are so many great resources online and offline that you can use. I would also suggest attending a free dashboard in a day training from one of Microsoft partners, as they could be a really good starting point. Microsoft Learn can help you to have a better understanding of all these topics and the official Power BI documentation is also available and constantly improving. With those materials, you can also prepare for the DA100 exam, which could be useful for any newcomers, especially if you are looking for an entry-level job. All in all, I reckon these tips could be useful for anyone joining the Power BI and Data family. But if you think I missed something, make sure to let me know in the comment section below. I would love to hear your tips for any newcomers. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope that you learned something new and interesting from today's video and you will be able to implement this for your report. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons before you leave or before you watch one from the above videos. Until the next one, see ya!